Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Locks and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at a very unusual set of fans which don't really break any ground when it comes to specifications, but when it comes to looks, they are something a little bit different. This is the Zizio ZS120. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at a set of fans that comes with a control hub, and I've got a really unusual look to them. You've probably seen from the B-roll already, which we filmed, you'll see that these are something a little bit different. They're not your typical addressable RGB fans. They've got a very strange look to them. They do say on the Alibaba site, or AliExpress even, that they are a kind of dreamy star effect. Although, I think they actually look quite like fireworks in some respects, especially things like a Catherine wheel. But anyway, that's for you to decide and for me to show you later on in the video. So let's go through, we'll do a quick unboxing, go through the specifications, etc. And then I'll leave some links in the video description below, so if you want to pick up a set of these, you certainly can do. These were actually sent to us very kindly by Ugly Bob, as uh, per usual. Thank you very much, Ugly Bob. And we've actually already decided who's going to get these, so these are going to be sent winging their way across the United Kingdom to their intended owner. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's take a look at them. So first of all, packaging-wise, they've actually... I think they've actually done themselves an injustice with the packaging. The fans on the front, they do look kind of unusual. You can already see that they do allude to something a little bit different. But I don't think this is actually the best picture they could have used for them, which you'll see why a little bit later on. So as you can see, this is the ZS120. It's a 120mm fan. Measurements are 120 by 120 by 25 mil, so absolutely standard there. It is a 3-in-1 kit, so it comes with the fans themselves, it comes with a control hub, and also a remote control. But don't worry, you can actually plumb them through into your motherboard if you support addressable RGB on your board with one of those 3-pin 5-volt headers. And that is compatible with pretty much most boards, such as your MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, etc, etc. So as long as you've got one of those addressable RGB headers, you're good to go. Although, if you don't have one, you can use the included remote control to cycle through the options, colours, speeds, etc, etc. So reading off the specs on the front, you can see it's not overly well specced. It's uh, pretty much what I would say is pretty much average, to be honest with you. When it comes to the max airflow, we're looking at 54.01 CFM. Max fan speed for these is 1800 RPM. They are controllable via PWM right down to essentially zero RPM, should you wish to. Maximum noise rated is 31.1 dBA, and the bearing is a hydraulic style bearing, and also is shown in the instruction leaflet and also on the site itself to be a dust proof bearing. On the side of the box, something which may interest some of you, so this is available actually in black or white, so if you've got a white theme build and you want to go for white fans, then that is an option. We have got the black ones here. Price-wise on these, it does fluctuate a lot on AliExpress as uh, things generally tend to, on exchange rates and shipping, all those kinds of things, but you should be able to pick these up for somewhere in the region of about £35. On the back of the box goes into some more of the details, so I'll give you a close-up of that. The one thing that I have noticed, it, they don't actually specify anywhere, either on the box, the instructions, or actually on the website, is it doesn't list the H2O performance, or the kind of static air pressure. So yeah, make up your own minds on those. We won't be doing any specific testing on this, because, well, we don't have the equipment to do so, but from what I can tell from already hooking them up, they do actually produce a particularly good airflow, and in terms of air pressure, it does seem to be a reasonable amount now, although I wouldn't like to give a specific figure on it. So let's take them out of the box and see what we actually get. So first of all, we get our user or instruction manual, which is a very, very simple affair, and literally is just a fold-out pamphlet, or leaflet rather, which is only one-sided, and goes through all the essentials. So it tells you what the remote control does, all the various buttons, which is pretty handy. You might actually want to keep this maybe tucked away underneath your keyboard, just in case you forget what they are, although the remote control does have information actually printed on it so you know what the buttons are as well. But just for reference purposes, you could quite easily fold this up and leave it under your keyboard or on your desk. Underneath that, it gives you information of how to hook it all up and what ports do what on the included hub. Next up, we've got our accessories box, which uh, yeah, is uh, pretty much what you'd expect to see here. So you get the usual culprits, so you get three sets of mountain screws for the fans, which is uh, pretty much expected these days, being that there is three fans in there. You also get the included control hub, which itself, I was surprised there wasn't some sort of adhesive on the back of this or an adhesive pad included, but don't worry, this is actually magnetic, so if you get it built into your PC, you can just place it against the back of your chassis or maybe on the deck or maybe in a drive bay, that kind of thing, to keep it secured. You can obviously, if you want to, get yourself a piece of double-sided tape or sticky tape and just attach it wherever you need to. 
The hub itself has got six ports on there in total, so you can, if you want to, get two sets of these and just use one control hub, should you wish to. The fans themselves are specific to this particular brand and also this specific hub, using a very custom design for the actual plugs. The one thing which isn't specific is the section on the end here, so this is a PWM style plug, although that does go to its own proprietary connection, which is actually designed for measuring temperature. So this set, although it will do PWM via your motherboard, you can also set it up so that there is a little thermistor or temperature probe, which you can put in your system in a specific place, so the fans will ramp up or ramp down according to the specific temperature from that probe. On the other side, there's another three connections and also another specific connection on the very end there, which is designed to connect up to your motherboard. So that is for the PWM pass-through and also the addressable RGB with that three pin five volt connector. The unit itself is powered by a single SATA connection. Always nice to see a SATA connection rather than being a Molex. So that just plugs in on the end there. Very simple and straightforward to do. Literally just get from your power supply one of those SATA plugs and plug it in and that will provide all the power you need for the controller and also the fans. Moving on to the connectivity, so this is the first of the connections, so this is the 5-pin connector that plugs into the hub, and then that splits off into two additional connectors, which are your standard 3-pin, 5-volt addressable RGB, and also a 4-pin PWM, although because it's self-powered and it's only using a kind of taco, then it's only got two of those pins actually physically wired. The next one is the actual resistor or thermistor or temperature probe, whatever you want to call it. So you've got this temperature probe here, which you could quite easily kind of bend over in half and put in between some of the fins on the heatsink, perhaps, maybe in your graphics card or on your CPU cooler, or maybe on your VRMs. The choice is entirely up to you. You could, if you want to, just leave it somewhere convenient in the kind of general area of the case. So it will take a reading and ramp up the fans or ramp them down according to that temperature value. Also included is a little RF remote control. So you can tell it's RF because when you press the button, there's a little red light on there, so it's infrared. The range on this, I'll be honest with you, isn't particularly great. So you are gonna to have to have it relatively close or nearby to the actual hub itself. Not the end of the world, but it would have been nice to have seen it using maybe radio frequency or something, so you could have a little bit more distance, but it does get the job done. On the controller itself, you've got a variety of different controls there. So you've got the power button, you've got color change options, mode options, and auto button. If you press auto, that basically goes through and does a kind of cycle of the various colors and options available to the fans themselves. Also, you've got the PWM button, so press PWM and it takes the PWM reading for the fans. On the other side, you've got the addressable RGB button, so that's basically your PC button. Press that and then all of the addressable lighting will be controlled from your motherboard. You've also got options on there for things like taking from the temperature probes, so there's a little temperature read in there on that blue button, so you press that and then the fan speed will be controlled by the thermal probe. You've also got brightness up and down, you've also got speed up and down as well for the speed of the actual lighting. That is going to be only for when it's in its kind of auto mode or in one of the pre-programmed modes, not from your motherboard mode. Obviously, when you're in motherboard mode, it will take the controls from the motherboard software or something like Signal RGB, Open RGB, those kinds of things. There are a couple of buttons on the bottom. There's a lock and also a 5 volt, 12 volt button, although those aren't actually used on this particular device. That must be for something else, but it's printed on there anyway, but those aren't actually used. The cog in the middle on the green button there is essentially a reset button, so if for some reason the controller or the hub gets a little bit confused and starts going a little bit crazy, press the reset button and it'll just go back, reset itself and go into the automatic mode. The last part of the kit are the fans themselves, and there's three included as we've seen. These are really unusual looking. The blades themselves have got a very unusual kind of look to them, and it's a, one of those things where I'm surprised no one else has done this. Maybe there's a reason for it, maybe there isn't, maybe it's something to do with the way that it's produced. But the blades themselves are actually all opaque, they've got that kind of smoke tint to them. But they've also got a mirror finish on them as well. So this is really good because you've got your addressable RGB ring around the outside edge of the frame, which then reflects onto the blades and gives off some of those crazy patterns that we we're gonna see. The fan's also pretty decent made. There's a nice, I, th I believe it's like a resin make, and also you've got rubberized pads to absorb vibrations on the front and also on the rear. On the back, it's got some information about the fan and the model number, etc. so I'll give you a close-up of that. And also you've got this cable coming off, which is a flat black cable, kind of licorice style, which terminates in that specific six pin connection, which is for this hub and this hub only. Potentially, those of you out there feeling a little bit adventurous, you could possibly de-pin this and rewire it into PWM and addressable RGB, Although for most people, I think it's probably gonna be simpler just to plug it straight into the hub. 
The fans themselves, like I said earlier in the video, these have got a maximum RPM of around about 1800 RPM. They do say in the manual and also in the blurb on the website, that is kind of plus or minus 10%. So they may ramp up to somewhere in the region of around about 1900, depending on the situation and also the voltages, case, resistance, airflow, etc., etc. So that's the introduction done. Let's get them powered up with a power supply and see what they're actually like. Okay, so we've got the fans powered up. Got our power, trusty power supply hidden here. Horrible power supply. Best it is hidden. So yeah, very easy to do. Literally all I've done, plugged in a SATA connection and the three fans straight into there. I haven't done anything else, no other wire into a motherboard, etc., because it's just basically on an open air bench. And straight away the fans are producing a, uh, a pretty decent stream of air actually. There is some resonance coming from the fans themselves and if I'm really quiet I'll uh, let you listen to that I'll maybe boost the gain so you can hear what it's like. Most of that noise is actually coming through the table itself so if I lift them up the tone will change a little bit. So you can see the tone has changed there with them lifted off the table are actually pretty much silent so that is always a good thing to see that they are essentially going to be very quiet and that one's vibrating now i really need to set up a proper uh, way of testing these okay so i'm really struggling to get rid of the noise through the desk here but anyway we will proceed anyway so turn them on all we do is press the power button and it goes straight into the auto setting because we obviously we haven't got a motherboard connected but you can see already there is a very unusual look to them the lighting in here probably doesn't quite do them justice. But it's a, a very, very unusual type of lighting pattern on there. And then the way it builds up the colours, I think, is actually really nicely done. As always, this is studio lighting conditions in here, so it will look slightly different and a little bit brighter. The LEDs actually are particularly bright, which is a really nice thing to see. And the patterns look really good. Let's go through some of the, uh, the modes here. So there are some very unusual modes here. I'm not entirely sure what this is actually meant to be, but I think you'll definitely agree it does look uh, different. This is one that I particularly like. This is what I think is kind of like a, a Catherine wheel type of design. So we've got all the uh, the kind of the LEDs sparkling out from the inside. And I think this is probably one of the showcase modes. It's a very unusual look. It almost looks like it's kind of 3D, almost like going into a warp field or something along those lines. Again, a very, very unusual look to them, which is down characteristically to the blades and the way they're designed, the reflectiveness, all that kind of stuff. And even if you spin them around, hopefully you can pick it up, it does show through on both sides. I'm just checking on the monitor there to see that it is actually visible. So yeah, it does look good from both sides. I think arguably it looks better from the front than it does from the rear. So let's try uh, another mode. So then we've got the kind of cycling through the colors, etc., like the Aurora Sync, the original Aurora Sync type of deal. Then you've got some other kind of sparkly ones. Again, this is what I think looks like kind of like fireflies or not that we get fireflies in the UK, but it's kind of a little bit like a sparkler effect. Then you've got some other ones where it kind of dances around with the colors. A build up again. That's actually quite pretty. I quite like that. The way that it builds up and then goes back down again. And then you've got the kind of the addition. That's actually pretty cool. If you're into your lighting, you're into RGB, I think you're going to like these a lot. If you if you don't like RGB, you probably A, shouldn't be watching this video and B, you probably shouldn't buy these. But if you do like RGB lighting effects and you do like something a little bit unusual, I think these tick actually a lot of boxes. Although the one thing I'm finding is the remote control does have to be in a certain position for it to actually register. Although, yeah, it seems to be registering fine now. So I have actually changed the battery in here. I did this in a live stream. We did take a quick look at these in a live stream. I have changed the batteries. So before you start messaging saying, oh, maybe the battery's flat, this is a brand new battery in here, which appears to be okay as a Duracell battery. It should be absolutely fine. But yeah, goes through the patterns, building up, etc. And there we've got back to that one as well. There aren't a great deal of lighting modes actually built in with this. And another thing I found is actually changing a static color with the buttons. For some reason, I can't seem to get it to work. Now I've looked through the very brief instruction manual. I've looked on the website. There is, as you'd expect with some of these kind of lesser known brands, there is uh, not a great deal of technical support available. 
So I think realistically, if you want to use these as a specific color and keep it as that, I would say you're probably best off controlling it from the motherboard. If you're looking for that granular control from the remote and from the hub itself, I think you might struggle a little bit. But I think that is a, a very minimal thing when it comes down to the actual look of these. The built-in modes, I think, is what you're kind of you're paying your money for and you're making your choice from. It's a very, very unique look. And they're relatively quiet. And even on full blast, again, not excessively noisy. You do notice in there, they say it's 31 dBA. Again, I've got no real way of measuring that because 31 dBA in this room is almost impossible to attain because we've got PCs and all that kind of stuff and just general life going on. But yeah, they're definitely not noisy, although they are on this desk, they are vibrating through the desk quite badly. Again, lift them up and absolutely fine. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this one. Just wanted to show you what they're like. It's a very unusual look, which I personally really like. I hope the intended owner of these, when we ship them out, actually uh, likes them as much as we do. And hopefully we'll post some pictures on our Discord when it's all set up so you can see what it actually looks like. I think that's going to be it for this video. So let me know what you think about these in the comments section below. Again, if you want to pick them up, there'll be some links. They won't be affiliated links, so we don't make any money on it. But obviously, if you want to pick some up for yourself, treat yourself for Christmas, then feel free to do so. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.